So we've set up a single standalone event in the events calendar, but now the events calendar pro users might be wondering how can we set up a recurrence pattern? That's what I'm gonna walk through in this screencast. This is a pro exclusive feature, so if you don't have the events calendar pro, you're not gonna see any options related to recurrence. You have to be a paying pro user to have them. But if you get them, they're a huge value add for your site. And so it's important that you understand how this works. Since we walked through the broader add new event creation process in the last screencast, I'm not gonna walk through too much on this page beyond those elements related to recurrence. So if you're interested in what the event options are, how the categories and tags work, etc., not here. Go back and watch the last screencast. I'm just gonna set up some dummy content. And then I'm gonna scroll down to the event time and date section where I wanna set up the initial event in this recurrence pattern. Basically, what is the first event that we're gonna duplicate for this recurrence pattern gonna be? Well, that's what I select here. I'm gonna keep it simple and make it an event that takes place on July 1st as an all day event. Right now, if we were to publish this as is, we would be creating one entry that would exist on July 1st. That would be it. But I can trigger recurrence by coming down here into this recurrence section and selecting none from the drop down and then picking the option I wanna go with. Now every day, every week, every month, and every year are gonna look very similar. They're gonna have this general formatting. It says the event is gonna recur every day and will end either on a specific date, which I can determine here with this date picker, or after a fixed number of events. Whatever I wanna do, it's going to be the same pretty much consistently for all of these, every week, every month, and every year. What I'd be saying in a situation like every week is, I want this event that starts on July 1st to occur every week, but only occur another one week beyond the one that it's already set up as. So what I would be doing in this situation is I'd, be, I'd really create two events. I'd have the initial one, and then I would have the recurrence so it recurred one week after that. More realistically, I'd probably wanna go with something like every week and then after 52 weeks that it took place this week and then the next 52 weeks from there. Basically, this week and then a year afterwards. Below, I have a recurrence description field, which is a new feature in the 3.0 release and is important to keep in mind. Previously, we just had our basic automated recurrence text, which said something like, in a situation like this, recurs every week for 52 weeks. But if I wanna override that with something myself, I totally can. I could go with something like, and the system's gonna allow me to have it. We'll see this in execution on the front end, but if I were to look at a recurrence pattern and hover my tooltip over the location where it lists that this is a recurring event, it would show me this recurrence description instead of the possibly more useful one that is automatically generated by this. If I want a nice useful auto-generated one, I can easily address it by leaving this field blank. It's important to note that these four, as I mentioned, are consistent, but custom really gives you some additional options. Notice when I select custom, it triggers this new frequency option. I have frequency daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly, and those do give different options specific to each. And this allows me to make really randomized recurrence patterns to the most random extent that we can do at the moment. Let's say I select weekly. And let's say I want this event to occur every one week. And it's gonna occur on Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday. What we're saying is we're setting up an event that starts on July 1st. It's gonna go 15 times. And those 15 times are gonna be made up of weekly events that are scheduled on Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Sort of confusing on the back end maybe, but we'll see it in execution on the front end, it'll make a lot more sense. And again, this is one of the more complex patterns you can go with. A lot of situations, if your events aren't random, you'll be more than satisfied with just something like every day, every week, or every month. Don't need to worry, I'm gonna skip the location for the venue and I'm gonna skip the organizer entirely, leave them to whatever they default to because we don't care about those here. Once I'm satisfied with the recurrence pattern itself, I'm gonna publish and I'm gonna watch what happens both here on the back end and on the front end. Here on the back end, you'll notice it changed the URL a little bit. No longer does it just show pro.tribe slash event slash my event URL, but it's added a date to the end of that, which suggests to me there are gonna be multiple entries and they're all gonna be separated out by separate dates. That's exactly how it is gonna behave. So let's go check it out on the front end. I'll view event, I'll go look at my event here, and we're gonna see that we are on the first entry of Rob's yoga class. It's the one that takes place July 1st, and that is the kickoff to this recurrence pattern. Here I have this recurring event option. If I hover my mouse over it, we'll see the tooltip brings up the exact terminology that I popped in on the back end. This is a crazy recurrence. Lastly, if I see all, I can actually go in and I can view all the events in that recurrence pattern taking place in one little list. 
So recurring event setup is pretty basic. Just know that you have more flexibility than it looks like at the offset with the various custom options. And while we're working to build out more advanced and truly randomized recurrence patterns, those aren't yet present in the 3.0 lifecycle. Thanks for watching. See you in the next screencast.